Thank you for joining me in my continuing chapter two coverage of ions, molecules, and atoms. In this video, I will teach you about ionic covalent and metallic bonds, as well as ionic versus molecular compounds. So elements bond together so they can donate, accept, or share electrons and thereby feel more like noble gases, as we discussed in our preceding video linked to in the description below. They do this, of course, by completing each other's octets. I'm not complete until I've completed my octet. There are three different kinds of chemical bonds that we'll now discuss. Ionic bonds are bonds between metals and nonmetals. Covalent bonds are bonds between nonmetals. And metallic bonds are bonds between two or more metals. Now, by way of reminder, here is the periodic table colorized to show you which elements are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids that kind of have properties of both categories a little bit. You'll see that the vast majority of elements are metals. With that in mind, Covalent bonds have two different subcategories. Polar covalent bonds are ones in which there is an uneven sharing of electrons, while nonpolar covalent bonds are ones in which there is an equal sharing of electrons between the atoms. Now, compounds that have ionic bonds in them are called ionic compounds. These again are compounds in which there are electrons being given and taken by one element and or another. Compounds that have covalent bonds in them are called molecular compounds. I wish they were called covalent compounds. They're not. They're called molecular compounds. Sorry about that. And compounds that have metallic bonds in them are called metallic compounds, which we will not discuss here, but we'll discuss in a later chapter far later on. Let's now take a closer look at each of these subtypes, beginning with ionic bonds. So please remember that nonmetals are much more electronegative. That is, they're thirstier for electrons than metals, because nonmetals are located further to the right and up on the periodic table. So when a nonmetal bonds with a metal, the metal being further to the left and down on the periodic table, more or less completely gives its electrons to the nonmetal. By doing this, the metal becomes a cation, which is a positively charged atom, while the nonmetal becomes an anion, which is a negatively charged atom. This type of bond between metals and nonmetals once again is called an ionic bond. So ionic bonds are bonds in which the metal atom or atoms have a more or less completely positive charge, while the nonmetal atom or atoms have a more or less completely negative charge. For example, when sodium, which is a metal and has this elemental symbol, yeah, the symbol for sodium doesn't match the English word sodium, sorry. Anyway, when a sodium atom, which is a metal, bonds with a chlorine, which is a nonmetal atom, the sodium transfers one of its electrons, its outermost valence electron, completely to the chlorine forming Na plus and Cl minus, which is sodium chloride table salt, which we often abbreviate just as NaCl in its chemical formula. The Na plus is a cation and the chloride is an anion. So again, the chlorine atom accepts that negatively charged outermost valence electron from the sodium. And when it does it, the chlorine now gets a negative charge becoming chloride. And the sodium having lost or given away its outermost electron now has a positive one charge sodium chloride. Now those sodium chloride ions cluster together like magnets, positive charges pointing at negative charges and vice versa in a complementary fashion as shown here. And they form a lattice that repeats kind of this repeating cluster of atoms over and over and over again in all directions until they get to the size that you can see when you look at table salt. The only difference at an atomic level is that they probably don't have the letters CL and NA written on the sides of them. We just kind of do that uh, to you know, understand them a little bit better. And they probably don't have these exact colors either. <laughs> so for a cool video showing the formation of sodium chloride table salt from sodium metal and chlorine gas, I invite you to take a look at this HTML, which I won't show here for copyright purposes, but I will include the link for in the description below. We end this part with a lecture question then. Why do nonmetals and metals bond with each other? Why is the formation of NaCl, which you can see in this video link right here, why is it so energetic? I'm not gonna answer that here, but I invite you to think about that on your own. We now move on to covalent bonds. So when two nonmetals bond to each other, they share electrons instead of having one atom completely transfer its electrons to the other. This type of bond is called a covalent bond. Now, although nonmetals do share their electrons when they bond to each other, not all covalent bonds have a perfectly equal amount of sharing. You see, when one atom is more electronegative than the other, the more electronegative atom will hog the electrons to itself a little bit more. For example, unlike sodium, hydrogen is actually a nonmetal. Thus, hydrogen and chlorine, when they bond together, they form a covalent, not an ionic, 
bond. However, because chlorine is much more electronegative than hydrogen, because it's further to the right on the periodic table, the sharing of electrons is uneven. So this uneven sharing of electrons results in a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. See, the electrons they're sharing are being hogged by the chlorine a lot more. And we represent this partial positive charge with this delta plus symbol. It also results in a partial negative charge represented by this symbol on the chlorine. A bond with uneven electron sharing is called a polar bond. If we had perfectly even sharing, then it would be called a nonpolar bond. To summarize then, ionic bonds have metals bonded to nonmetals, and in ionic bonds, the metal pretty much gives its electrons to the nonmetal, which takes it. Covalent bonds are all nonmetals, where they share electrons, and that's pretty much it for now.